Good evening and welcome along to the show. Uh, I'm Justin McCartney. Uh, Marty McCauley is standing by. And uh, we're uh, with a big show tonight, Marty, don't we? We do indeed, Justin. We do indeed. We have, uh, we have a whiskey tasting and we're going to talk about some of the recent whiskey being in the news. Right. There's been some scandalous news uh, this while back, hasn't there? As Justin, there has. Um, so we're going to touch on that. Okay, I look forward to it. Now, uh, tell us about our friends at uh, W.D. O'Connell Whiskey Merchants, because luckily enough, uh, everybody, well, uh, most people have managed to get them this week, haven't they? They have. Uh, they were posted out at the start of the week, but <sighs> everything being blamed on coronavirus and, uh, you know, COVID-19, the post seems to be a bit all over the place. I've, I'm waiting on whiskey coming from... Uh, for about three weeks now, and uh, I know I have a friend who has uh, a package that's been sitting in Dublin since the start of August. <laughs> well, I actually know somebody who only got their uh, the last taste last Friday. I know. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to know what's going on in the post. As I say, everything's blamed on COVID nineteen. So, so there must be a lot of post people, postmen and women lying, uh, feet up. You know. <laughs> Don't, don't know. It, it, it totally, it totally beggars belief. So, uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, W.D. O'Connell because this is relatively new. Uh, the two, uh, Bill Phil and the uh, Bed Reminis cast, we're going to try tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, this is a whiskey merchant, as it says on on the label. Uh, the 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 one man band that is. Uh, W.D. O'Connell is a man called Dahi O'Connell and he he's a bit of an adventure a bit of a uh, a bit of an all action man you know he, he's he's from uh, Cork originally he went he got a job down in Cork he was working in sort of the hospitality industry down there found himself in Australia he was where he was he learned to sail he's a pilot he went, went to Denmark and Ended up in Hong Kong, where he was working in uh, pubs and bars over there. Um, and I think he kind of got the idea that, well, it was a sort of a sad, dreary section of Irish whiskey over there at the time. And uh, this was, I think, back in about 2015. So it was very much, you had a Jameson, bottle of Bush Mills. That was really about it. So he had it in his head that, Get part, become part of the Irish whiskey scene. Um, so he went round a few suppliers to see if he could buy his his own whiskey. And really, I think it only when he got to uh, the Great Northern Distillery or, or did he find that they would supply him with whiskey at a reasonable a reasonable price where he could actually uh, bottle it and sell it. He's an independent. So what he wants to do is buy spirit from other places, blend it up, finish it whatever way he wants to his own specification and taste, and then that's how he's going to produce his whiskey. So it'll be coming out as independent, and it's really his his vision and his idea of, of what he wants. Yep. So. I mean, it's it's pretty... F it's pretty fancily packaged, I think. It's it's very clear. It, it, it's very concise. I mean, yeah. it, it's unmistakable, the label. And dare I say I'm going to jump the gun here, the taste is unmistakable as well. <laughs> have you been doing a wee sneaky tasting again, Justin? <laughs> I might have been. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 might, I, might, I, might, I might have been, yeah. No, well, I, I, it's very... It's very sort of traditional. Um, it's, I mean, it's exactly what it says on on the tin, uh, on the ball. Uh, and he's very, he's, he's quite open about what he does. He tells you where the whiskey comes from. He, he states it quite clearly. It's all small batch, so everything's going to be different, um, depending on what he what he selects himself and, and where and really what his vision is going to be and where he wants it to be. So each bottling, essentially, each batch is going to be different. Okay. And, uh, well, uh, 
how is this going to continue? I mean, everybody's doing this. We're hardly going to run out of samples to try or whiskey distilleries to go to at this rate. Not everybody's doing this now, Justin. Not everybody's doing this. Lots of people, there's lots of people buying whiskey from other places. That's going on. But all these new distilleries are opening up and they're, they'll be producing their own product. Um, obviously, that takes a period of time. There's a there's a three-year lag at any point with whiskey simply because it, uh, by law, it has to be aged. So, but what Dahi has done uh, as an independent bottler is really follow on a tradition that that was much more commonplace many moons ago. And it happens quite a lot in Scotland where independent bottlers are are some of the best, most highly regarded people in the industry. So you have the like Caden Heads who probably are the probably the most famous of them all. And they, I mean, they buy again Bush Mills, but they'll buy uh, single cast bottlings of Bush Mills, for example, and they'll they'll get the sample different casts until they say, that's the one we want, we want that. So th- th- this, this is not a, a new thing, but it doesn't really happen just the way Dahi's doing it in, in Ireland, just at the minute. Now he has big ambitions. Um, he wants to be, he says it on his website, he wants to be the largest independent bottler uh, in Ireland uh, by 2035. So he, I mean, he, he's a guy with ambitions. Now, these are the first bottlings. There he is, with his resplendent facial hair. Um, but I spoke to him a couple of times, and obviously coming up to this, I had to speak to him about getting these uh, bottles sent out. So he, he's, he's, he's a nice guy, nice guy. Now, this first one, uh, what does Bill Phil mean? What, what, what does that mean? Well, the W, um, the W is for, for William. Is, he comes from a long line, uh, apparently. I don't know how many generations back this goes, but he comes from a long line of uh, guys whose name was William Phillip. So, Bill Phil. So, it's a sort of homage to his... I think his father and grandfather and great grandfather were all Bill Phil. So it's it's basically a homage to his his uh, ancestors, if you like. So it's almost basically a play on his name, basically. That that's that's just it. It's a bit of a tribute to his family name. You know? Okay, well we'll better say hello to some of the people watching tonight okay. already. Uh, before we uh, before we uh, run out of time, a lot of people watching tonight already. Uh, we'll put their names up here. What do we see? Uh, let me see who's saying. Uh, Mark Kerr, straight off. Good evening, Naz. Good evening to you. Uh, Patrick Mugley saying good evening. Um, a lot of regular viewers now, never missing this. Trevor Watson saying hello. Good evening to you. Remember to comment, like, and share, and share it on Facebook, and like us on YouTube as well. Uh, Julie Mason is saying, there you go. Good evening to you. Uh, uh, Mark Kerr saying, sadly, mine is one of the ones that failed. It'll probably pop through on Monday. They probably are. pop. Uh, well, you know. really, guys, watch the show. You can, you can watch it on repeat on our YouTube channel. And you them. Yes, you can. Yes, it's very easy to find. Irish Ris- Whiskey Review. Uh, so we've, we've, we've changed the branding. What was all that about, Marty, changing the branding? Well, do you want me to tell you the truth, Justin? Or do you want me to lie and give you sort of PR, bug that, you know, that it plays better? It's because most people from the States haven't a clue where Ulster is. Now, okay. you and I both know that it's the party and cultural capital of the world. But uh, unfortunately, most people don't know where it is. So... Just for terms of, uh, in, ter- in terms really of, of branding, um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. He's, he's saying he likes the bottling here. Uh, Cian has bottling. Uh, yeah. uh, he's a high achiever, is Bill. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe he is. These guys are highly motivated. You yeah. have to be to, to, to do this. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I don't think I would have the kahunas to, to do it. Would you, would you, Marty? You'd like to try it, I think. I, I would give it, I would give it a whiz. I would give it a whiz. Um, to be honest, to be honest, Justin, I have so much, I have so much to do these days just looking after you, uh, keeping you right. <laughs> 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 oh boy, I tell you, I tell, I, 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 I tell you, 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 you
Okay, right. We're uh, 12 minutes in tonight. Uh, if you want to ask us any questions, make sure you uh, get in touch. Just type, type it in and we'll put it up on screen. So no. what, are, what are we going to do first, Mark? <laughs> Oops. I'll tell you what we'll do first. Because Bill fills pita, um, normally if you take a pita whiskey, it, it could, it, it's flavoured for quite a period of time. So what we'll do first, actually, is we'll do the PX. We'll do the PX. Um, so this is a limited edition. Uh, small batch. I mean, all of these are small batches. They, they do... He wants to do between one and ten cask of a, of a, of a release. So this is 370 bottles of this um, at 47... 46%. Um, so... This is really only going to be a, a, a cask. So this is finished in Pedro Jimenez Sherry, which I know you're a big fan of. I am indeed, yes. It's a special grape variety, actually, and it, no. it, it, isn't, it isn't really a sherry. It's a, it's a separate thing to itself, uh, Pedro Jimenez, actually, if you're, if you're going to be pedantic about the whole thing. But it just is succulent stuff. I mean, it, I think seems recent history was only... only uh, Stock one kind of Pedro Jimenez, believe it or not. I think I think you're quite correct. I'm not 100 sure, but I think you're quite right. Um, so this is first fill bourbon casks before it goes into the PX cask. Now, with your first fill bourbon, what that means is the cask stored bourbon for however long, and then this is the next liquid to go in it. So you'll see that that's that will have lots of the bourbon characteristics coming out of it. Plus the wood is uh, you're getting, going to get an awful lot more of the wood interaction too. Mostly when you see bourbon cask on a on a on a, a whiskey bottle, it'll not be first fill. It'll be a few down the line. So this is first fill bourbon, then finished in PX cask. Now it's a single malt from Cooley which is in County Life, just over the border. Now, this is, a, as I say, it's limited to 307. I think it's sold out pretty much everywhere. Um, I think I think it is. But you'll probably be able to pick it up on a uh, auction website if you really wanted to. Now, this is about £150 a bottle. About 150 euro. So, at auction, you'll probably pay a little bit more than that for it. So, so it's a it's a pretty special product, then, isn't it? It's, it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. What should we do first? Give it a little nose. Now remember, it's it's 46 percent. So, it's non chill filtered. Now, what does that mean? What does the non chill filter mean then? What happens is most whiskey is chill filtered, which means just before it's before it's bottled, it is basically chilled away down to break up uh, long chain esters, is what they are. There's chemicals that are in the the in the whiskey that when they're exposed to extreme cold or or if you put cold water in them, it goes cloudy. And basically, these these um, molecules clump together, and that makes it go cloudy. So to, to try and stop that, people chill filter it. Okay, well, I think it's I think do they do this with sake as well? It's originally yeah. white, and they, they they take I think they do something like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots yeah. of drink industries do this. When it's bottled slightly higher alcohol, it. it basically prevents that from happening which is not to say that when you put if you put too cold water in this too quickly it may go cloudy there's nothing wrong with this that, that's perfect i once bought a what was it a dunville sherry cask uh, the, the the 10 year old at a hotel and put a little bit of water in it and it was iced water and it, it went a bit cloudy and the guy that was sitting with me said oh, wh that whiskey's gone off <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it hasn't. Oh, he says there's something wrong with that. No, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's okay. 
It's just the water was deep, lady. But you, you, you're a bit like Her Majesty the Queen. She doesn't like square ice cubes. She only has round ice cubes because she only likes the, the musical notes of them. Is that true? I don't know whether it's true or not. I don't know. I've never had. A, I've never had a, 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 a whiskey and bit bits of ice on it with the Queen. But if, if, if I ever do, Justin, I'll let you know. I'd like to be there too. <laughs> uh, I believe. I believe she only likes Dubonny and white lemonade. But anyway, I like it. I, mean, I, I like it enough. Anyway. But like this, but like this, whenever me and you are getting our OBEs. Um, we'll find out. We'll ask a right friend. A, quick, a swift half somewhere around the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Right. I think. Right. So, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? On the nose. As I say, remember it's 40, 46 percent, so you don't want to dig in too far. Let it come to you, and you're getting that lovely sweetness. It's nice red berry, touch of vanilla. There's a nice, there's a nice little spice there, a sort of warming spice. You get that? It's kind of nearly like ginger. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do get it. I, actually, I, I wondered what, 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 what it was when I tried it. That you're, you're helping me describe my own thoughts here. Actually, Marty, this is, this is the thing. This is a good thing. Now, with this, you might want to put a little bit of water on it, just a little. But we'll give it a wee taste first. Bang. Full of berries, absolutely cram full of berries. Um, you're getting strawberry, um, red currant, lovely honeyed, really good mouthfeel to it. When you get, when you get that mouthfeel, it's that richness that goes around, that velvet richness that goes around the mouth. You coat your mouth, really good. Lovely white chocolate on the finish. It's starting to develop a bit on the white chocolate and the finish. Again, some more berries. Honey again. And still, there's still that little, there's a little peppery thing coming through there. And the bourbon, you can get the bourbon much more on the finish than you do at the, on, the, on the delivery, which is... When I, you think, I, think, I, I agree with you. Definitely, you're getting the bourbon on the finish. Definitely. <laughs> when, it, when it's in your mouth, you get a bit of it, but it, it comes a lot better at the at the, at the, the finish of the, the whiskey, you know. But put a little touch of water in that, not too much. Just a little. And leave it a little second or two. Yeah. I, I, I actually don't mind that without the water in it. I I you could do that without the water easily, but with a touch of water in it, it'll open it up a little bit. Because forty six percent is quite strong, um, and there's lots and lots of alcohol reacting there. So I tell you, I tell you what, it's a hell of a lot more aromatic once with a drop of water in it, and, and, and now that it's opened up a bit. Yeah. See now, now you're actually getting a bit more of the honey coming through, a bit more of the bourbon coming through as well. Um, there's a bit less of the pepper, a bit less of that gingery spice. Sounds like, a, sounds like a spice girl there. You know, gingery spice. <laughs> this is what Jerry's doing with herself these days. Yeah. Why have have so, they started a whiskey distillery or a gin distillery? <laughs> I, I, who was it? Is it Julia Bradbury started a gin distillery or something like that? I can't remember. I, don't I, was, know. Re I was reading something about this this week when we were researching, yeah, researching this. Wasn't in the spice girls, but yeah. No, I know, I know, I know, but... If you want to be her lover, you you don't even have to be her friend. <laughs> <laughs> you're bad. You're a bad man. Bad we'll bad. get we'll get struck. At Mark Zuckerberg will be coming for you in the night. I think me and him fell out enough over the past while. But <laughs> I know, I know. Again, with the water in it, it's taken away that little fiery edge that was there. Um, it's given it a little bit more um, passivity. You know, it's a bit more. Passive as it's mm. again, lots of cream, it's buttery, very nice and sweet. Lots of berries, not just as much berry on it now, it's more moved to a honey rather than, than the berry. Um, nice, nice touches of vanilla through it. It's, it's not just as not just as sweet with the water in it. Which is not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, very nice. 
yes, it's it's, it's actually it is it is very nice that. Yeah, it's really nice. Why is there everybody seems to do these Pedro Jimenez now this world back? Why why is that? Um it just it used to be uh, it was mainly all the Russo, but I think lots of people have discovered that uh, PX gives it a, a different flavour. It's not as it's not as tarry sweet, if you know what I mean. You know that sort of thick sugary sweetness, but sometimes can be a bit overbearing. Um it, it just gives it a different balance. Um loads of people are doing PX finishes now. Um and and We've done plenty of all the Russo. Um, um, there's other guys bringing out different cask finishes all the time. I mean, our, one of our favourites, Cologne, they're doing the experimental uh, cask finishing. But they, they're all experimenting with different casks. And Dai's obviously decided that this was the one that he wanted to do, that nice, rounded, balanced, um, not overly sickly sweet uh, finish. So... In case you wonder what I'm doing, the actual there's a little one of those fruit flies, you know, off the, off the the fruit ball, and it's flying around me. And you can't see it, but I can. I thought, I thought, it's, I thought. As you well know, was living down here at the sea. If I leave my front door open for any length of time, there's like three wee flies. It's always the same. It's like three flies just circle around my room like that there. And, and <laughs> <laughs> are they the whiskey connoisseurs, Marty? Well. I don't know, but they seem to always come in when when the front doors open. I think they're they're apprentice the burglars. But uh, <laughs> the thing is, I had a friend down here earlier on, and I was down for a while, and I opened the door, and there was like two flies come in, and one of them has been circling around ever since. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's one of the problems of living down here. Hmm. Okay, so we're getting a lot of responses in. People asking about uh, about this, this. We'll uh, we'll get we'll get to them in a minute because uh, we're heading up on halfway through the show. And uh, well, let's go. I don't know where the time goes. So there we go. We're up and running. Let me see. Uh, there's William McClanagan saying, I "Really want to try this?" Yeah. Uh, Michael Matthews is, uh, oh, there's loads coming in. Where were we? I have to find where we were. There's just so many coming in. I have to keep up with it. <laughs> keep up with it. Where, where was I? Uh, Michael Matthews, uh, where, where we start? High Achiever. There we go. Evening. Uh, will <laughs> there be any jaunty, jaunty headwear in this evening's show? No, there won't. <laughs> no. This here seems to, seems to have left a lasting impression with Peter. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. And then uh, Thomas Madol is saying, nice bottle of set Sexton sitting there, young fella. There's a reason for this. There's a reason this lineup's here. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll, but, we'll get to that. I mean, it, we're over the moon that uh, W.D. O'Connell sent this through. We weren't expecting a bill filled, but we've got the, the PX-17 as well, which is... Oh, yeah. I, for, for me personally, having tried the both of them already, the PX-17, the Pedro Emin is... It, it does it for me, but I, ha I have a penchant for, for, for Pedro Jimenez, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know Michael Matthews is saying uh, he tried the Killarney, but now it's Waterford. All right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, Colin McCauley is saying good evening from the colonies. Where's oh. he? Where's he? Canada? Or is he is he, is he down south and he's being funny? No, I, th I, <laughs> I assume this is a Colin McCauley to whom I, I have met. He lives in Seattle. All right, so he's, he's, it's it's the colonies. All right, all right. Former colonies. <laughs> God, 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 speed to the president. Uh, let me see. Uh, lovely favors on the nose. There we go. Lovely yeah. favors on the nose. Uh, very, very nice. Very aromatic. Very nice and sweet. Um, it's nice, nicely, sweetly balanced. You know. You know. I had a Krabby's ginger ale to start off with tonight. So. Uh, you know, because well, it cleanses the palate, the old ginger ale, doesn't it? You know, uh, so gosh, that is good. That is good. Yep, it's very good. So, I think we'll give that a thumbs up, Justin, will we? I think we'll give that, I would give that an 8.5 out of 10. I, I wouldn't be far behind you. I might, I might just give it an 8. Um, right, okay. It's definitely, yeah. it's definitely as good as the other one we're trying. That is, that is good. That oh, is yeah. good. It's a, uh, 
Fair. Now, uh, that would be Oddball Exclusive Award for me. Is that is that me winning the Oddball Exclusive? I always liked Oddball. What was it? <laughs> Kelly's, Kelly's Heroes he was in. Was that Don Rickles? I think Don Rickles. No, Don, it was Donald Southern and was Oddball. I, I, I just... I'm lost. I don't know what the oddball exclusive award. I don't know what these. I don't know what the guy's talking about. Here's your old price saying hello, right? Uh, yeah. Michael Matthews, who's obviously got his sample, he's saying that's very, very, very tasty. Yes, it is. Uh, Trevor was asking for our score out of ten. Do you agree with this, Trevor? If you if you disagree with anything we're saying tonight, always say because this is honest. By the way, we haven't been bought and paid for. I mean, no. there is not a new Bentley with W. D. O'Connell written down the side of it out the front of my garage. That that's not my car. All right. No, no, uh, it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it says uh, tastes great out of the tooth grass. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Michael Matthews thinks there's too much fruit in the glass. Um, I see, is it, he's making fun of your reviews. You're becoming one of those hypocrites with, with, the, with the review. Like, uh, don't, uh, don't, don't, spoil this, don't spoil the show. Don't spoil what's coming up. Don't spoil what's coming up. Hmm. There's Mark Kerr saying he likes the Dunville's PX. We did have it. I have the bottle somewhere, but it it it, 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 it was fantastic too. This is fantastic. Um, that's lovely. And now, see, yeah, it's actually whenever you you let it sit for a little while, there's actually a sort of cinnamon note to it. Um, the ginger sort of moved from being the spices moved from being ginger to sort of cinnamon, and that's that's that interplay with the water and a bit more time being decanted and stuff. You know, yeah, that's lovely. It's really nice. I'll, I'll give it an extra half mark. I'm with you now, Justin. I'm an eight and a half now. Mm. Oh, sure. You're right. That's incredible, isn't it? You, you live, you live and learn. That is, that is incredible. Uh, although Patrick saying he thinks it's a Persian without the water. Yeah, it's it's a it's a yeah. sharpness without the water. It has a sharpness. Uh, this is, a, this is uh, the joy of having something that's a bit stronger in in the ABV. Um, yeah. Because whenever it's a bit stronger in ABV, you can play with it and work with it about yourself, and a little bit of water, and, and that's why you would buy a bottle of this because. If you're going to buy something, what's uh, 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 a considerable amount of money, you know, when it's all said and done, um, you probably be flying about there. I'll get you, you get. Anyway, mm -hmm. so, uh, you want that, you can have that interplay with um, with the water. I mean, I, we had, again, the cologne on there, um, where I put about five teaspoons of water in it because it was so, so heavy in alcohol. That, that you go down through um, all of that. You can work with all the water and, and play with it to suit your taste. And that's why it, it's a bit more expensive. You have to remember there's more tax on it. We talked about that on the other show. So all of this, it's all about the experience and the enjoyment and learning the history and finding out about Dahi and all the, everything else that goes along with it. And that's why these things are, well, it's a considerable amount of money, but worth it in many, many ways, you know. Okay, so we're we're over halfway through the show tonight. Some great responses coming there. Uh, Mark Diamond was saying, uh, not a whiskey drinker, but finds it incredibly interesting. Uh, a solid eight, very much the eight plus. Patrick's with me, and Michael Matthews was saying, yes, he means the OBE as an odd ball. Yeah, we were miles away, Justin. We were miles miles away. No, I I don't have the OBE. My uncle has the CBE, but I don't have I don't have the OBE or anything like that. Uh, but there you go. You never know. World War Three, I might get one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For you work in the intelligence service, Justin. Huh? No, they've turned me down twice. Um, <laughs> what was going to say is. Uh, <laughs> We're going to turn our attention now to the bill fill now, yeah. Yeah, and the reason with this is this is um, not anywhere near as expensive. Uh, it's forty-seven and a half percent, so it's actually higher in the in the ABV. Again, non-chill filtered, single malt. This is triple distilled peat Irish whiskey. Now, this is coming from the Great Northern Distillery, the the, the legendary Dr. John Teeling's place. Uh, who I think is the saviour of Irish whiskey, but there we go. Um, we, we did Peter Irish whiskey a few weeks ago. Um, so this is a, this is triple distilled Peter Irish whiskey, which is a bit of a rarity, um, to be honest. 
Oh, the man himself is watching tonight. We we have to we have to mind our p's and q's. Look there, there he is. PX eighteen is cast strength of nine point five. There you go. Well, hang on. Bear with me two seconds. He's a way to get it. He is a way to get it. Probably. Oh yes, I should have had these actually. There's there's the get team. And uh, I've got one of them as well, just just for good measure. I haven't opened these because I knew these samples was coming, but I have these bottles. So, yes, Di, we have, we have, I should have had these out, I do apologise. But, uh, yeah, we have the 18 as well. What, where's mine? <laughs> Possibly still in the shop, Justin. <laughs> all right, I thought you were going to drive down here today. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I, these were not given to me by Di. These were, these were, uh, I bought these, so just in case anybody's out there thinking, oh, worry. anytime I get sent some whiskey, and I do occasionally get sent bottles by distilleries and stuff, I do tell people if I'm reviewing them, these are these were sent to me. Just be, I work for myself, so um, I can say whatever I like. I taste I tasted a whiskey this week, which I thought was possibly the worst whiskey I've ever tasted in my life. You did say we did say we won't give them a mention tonight. You give them a mention in your uh, newspaper article, no doubt. No, there's a review coming up on it. I, I got it, and uh, it was that bad. I almost washed my mouth out with proper twelve. That's how bad that was. Okay, <laughs> right, all right. So, uh, yes, rough, 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 rough. There we're getting we're getting a thumbs up from the boss himself. Yeah, good work. Yes, it is. It is good work. I mean, it good work. Ben. Now, have we poured the pee? Have we poured the uh, bell? I have, I, I have it, I have it, I have it poured. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now, now again, it's forty-seven and a half percent, so there might be just a little bit too much alcohol there. So you, you know, you have to think about this whenever you're going to do it. Now, well, I'm, I'm glad we tried them in that order. I think I tried them in the wrong order before. See, if you if you take a peanut, peanut whiskies have that, that big punchy thing, and it taints the flavours for. For a period after it, so you, you'd have to sit and wait and wash your mouth and all that. So, I think we did it in the right order. You know? Now, off that you're getting the peat, you're getting the smoke, obviously that phenolic thing, um, a touch of like carbolic soap, if you remember it, which, which is quite pleasant. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, but there's but if you do behind that, you're getting a sort of deeper fruit. You're getting you're getting like a barbecued banana, a banana cake. There's a, there's a, there's a slight, it's like pink grapefruit would be one. I, so, I don't, I, I, some people are saying the peat came through very strong straight away. No, see, I think the peat's a little bit, it's, it's quite subtle. Um, I, I think it's subtle compared to other PD ones. It's not as punchy. It's not as punchy. It's definitely a little bit milder, but that's maybe there's maybe a little bit of interplay between the peat and the and the alcohol here. I mean, it's a, you're almost touching fifty percent alcohol. I'm going to say if you put a little bit of water in that, the peat will come on even stronger. So we'll give it a wee taste and see how we go on. Now, quite sharp to start with, um, a bit citrusy. It's actually, in some ways, reminding me a little bit of a Lefroy, because there's that citrus, citrus sharpness going through it, nearly like a lime or a lemon. Um, toffee, again, still the smoke, you're getting that smoke. There's a perfumey note in it. It's really quite fragrant, which works quite well with, with the smoke. This is, this is good, too. This is good, too. That's that's excellent. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that is, I think I tried them in the wrong order. When they came, only this morning, I tried the, I tried, uh, the Bill Phil first and then the PX-17, and I thought the PX-17 was better than the Bill Phil, but now I think they're on a par. They're different, completely different product, but this is... This is pretty darn good. They are. 
So we're getting asked excellent questions tonight. We've been asked, what do you both prefer as a palate cleanser? Now, I personally prefer wasabi in Sendai in Japan, but we're not allowed to go there at the minute, so it would have to do as uh, cheese from my uh, fridge down below. As a palate cleanser, let me drop the stout. In a glass, in a glass. Mm. I do like a tin as well, or a bottle. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Guinness fan. Guinness is just about perfect. You know? But I use something like that. Um, and obviously water as well works quite well. But oh. Now, we'll get back to this. This is good. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Again, the... The mouth feel. I, I I thought I thought the silk was it the silky PD one we had the other week was it I thought it was good. This might have the edge on it. This might be at point five two. Well, this this is again um, a, oh. a bit smokier, a bit peatier than than the dark silky. This is um, just a single malt, whereas the the dark silky was a blend. This is very good, very good. I tell you what, it's ar aromatic too, isn't it? Aromatic. Um, on the tasting in the tasting notes on the website, if you go to it, it comments about like Earl Grey tea. I I, I don't like Earl Grey tea. I don't like that overly perfumey taste. This is aromatic, not perfumey. Um, it has it has lots of. Uh, there's almost a gin like quality to this, if you know what I mean. It's that sort of botanical aromatic. Juniper sort of berry taste to it. Mm. I think that's another big thumbs up. I really like that too. I'm a big fan of peaty whiskey. That's that's actually peaty without with, with a good nice cleansing. Uh, ah, that's very good. Very good. I think we really need to thank them. We really, really need to thank them. That 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 there's that there's excellent. Honestly, that there that there is a, that, that 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 there is is quite simply superb. <laughs> Cheers to Danny. Well done. A big a round of applause for both of them. I would, I'd be honest, we haven't happy enough to give both of those eight and a half. Um, yeah, I I I, th I think so too. I think we would let that sit another little while because I think. It uh, how, how long? How long has he actually been at this now? You say? I don't think he's had it a big lot. I don't think he's had it a huge amount of time. I think he's maybe only had it a couple of years. Um, he's, he worked in the bar industry in in Tokyo or Tokyo, Hong Kong. So he's had it a couple of years, but he, he knows his stuff. You know, good on him. Yeah, and if you're interested in getting your hands on it yourself, here's how you do it. Uh, there's a few bottles left in, in Irish malts, James Fox's, and back in stock on Monday in both. Bradley, CWL's number 21, and Carry Out Killarney, and Nina, and Tremor also. There you go. Excellent. He will be releasing, the, there should be a bill fill released every year, is what he has told me. I'll just have to check my notes. Um, and they have, so it'll be a future, I'm oh, sorry, future PX and um, bill fill number two will be coming soon. Uh, so, yeah, so there's more to come from from Dahi, and I think on the basis of this, more power at his elbow, you know. Well, there's Trevor Watson. Uh, Justin, you're enjoying that too much. Listen, I, I'm only the tech up here. I only do this, you know, because it's, you know, I'm controlling all this at my end. Marty's just sitting there with his phone. Uh, and, you know, I always, I always like the wee, wee tipple. I've always liked the wee tipple. I mean, I drink le less now than I used to drink, right? I used to work down no. the harbour. Can maybe work out how much I used to drink, uh, but but that there is something else. That it's there good. is something else. It's really good. They're both really really good. Um, yeah, as I say, he's 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 one of few he's one of few uh, fans here. I think you know. So uh, Michael Matthews is saying he, he just dropped a wee drop of water in and it's opened up. I'm going to drop a wee drop of water and I haven't dropped a wee drop of water in. There we go. Drop the wee drop of water. I'll let mine sit for a while. Yeah. Like you, it just it just opens the thing up. I mean, at forty seven and a half percent, it's 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 good that they release that at that because you can work with it. And some people will say, "I I just drink it at that," 
personally, I think that, that it's a bit too much. It needs a little bit to let it open up. I mean, most blenders, if you talk to blenders who, for my money, are the, the, the fighter pilots, if you like, of, uh, of the whiskey world, when they're nosing their whiskies to test whether see whether or not they're they're right, normally they'll water them down to about twenty percent because it's that's really where they think they they, they gain the most uh, from it, you know. So yeah, very 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 good. Everybody's agreeing more or less tonight on the eight point five, but the looks of it. There you go. Uh, so so we've. We'll we'll try to try this again with the water in it now. We'll, look, it's almost a different product with the water in it. That just totally changes, thing. you know. And the, the whiskey's come on, or the whiskey, the smoke's come on a little bit. It's more smoky rather than phenolic peat. You know that chemical taste has sort of changed. It's become a bit more smoky. I don't know. I think I prefer it without the water. I prefer that without the water, but it's it's definitely an eight point five. That's that's uh, that that's not that's not bad. That's not bad. And and, and maybe we're being we we maybe we're being too too tight. I mean, I don't think I've I've ever given the ten in my life. Oh, well, I've got. There's a couple of things. I I'm a great believer in, and if something's a ten, it gets a ten. Uh, I'm not one of these. Oh no, it's not perfect. I'll give you. I, I'm not talking whiskey. A draft pint of Guinness poured perfectly is a ten out of ten. There's nothing beats it. It's like Heinz tomato sauce. Nothing it's, beats. It. It's sauce. very very hard to get it. It is. I like Napoli tomato sauce actually, but it's very 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 hard hard to beat. Uh, it, a perfectly yeah. poured pint. But you need to go to Galway to get something like that. Oh well, yeah, I tell you, I'm in Glenarm. Stevie's in Glenarm. Uh, it's a, a fine pint of Guinness. Fine pint. Of Guinness. Right. And there. <laughs> And there we go, England, Little Whiskey and Independent Spirit and Bath. There you go. There's people watching this show all over the world. Where are the Canadians tonight? We get Canadians, Australians, the people in the US. Um, I, I think, I, I think the, peak, the peak show was 7.5 thousand people, which is uh, far more than uh, other whiskey reviewers. Far more. Uh, well, see, we, we do set trends, Justin. You know, we're a bit of trendsetters. It's, uh, it's amazing how many people four weeks after we do something that pops up. Yeah, <laughs> imitation is the best form of flattery. Yes, yes. It, there you a, go. Uh, look, 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 there's Mark Kerr saying he got a, he got a pint of Guinness and Kong in 1976, and it was <laughs> it was heaven in a quiet and a glass and a glass. He was in quiet man country. It was that good. He remembers it from 1976. Uh, God almighty! If you're coming. Stop off in the Bridge End Tavern, tell Stevie I said hello and get a pint in there. Superb. All right. Three pound, three pound a pint. Uh, Incredible. Uh, there's, there's James Murray Doherty said, tip of the spear, guys. Tip of the spear. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Come to Scurries when lockdown is over and you'll get a pint that is 10 all day. I've been in Scurries many a time. Right, well, we'll hold you to that, son. We'll hold you to that, son. Which, 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 where's he, where's he talking about in Scaries? No, I know where it is, but what, 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 where's he talking about that got a 10 in Scaries? Must be the Guinness, probably. It's the Guinness. Well, no, 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 I know, I know it's the Guinness, but there's a couple of wee pubs along the seafront there in Scaries, isn't there? I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there is. I, I, I know one of them doesn't take plastic because I, you know what I'm like. I always try to play with plastic, and they never have a plastic machine. There you go. Somebody mm -hmm. wants to tell them that Stripes uh, an Irish company, but there you go. Um, listen, we've only got 15 minutes left. We we'll better, we we'll better, we we'll better leave this here. Take it off screen because we don't want them to be associated with what we're going to talk about next because we're getting serious now tonight. <laughs> no, we're not really getting serious. It's just it's about whiskey being in the news. But we'll just say a big thank you to Dahi and W. D. O'Connell and the Bell and etc. I, I think keep doing what you're doing and, and more power to you. Look at that uh, there. I've got I've got it up. I've got it up. The whiskey <laughs> Bible on screen. Oh my oh, 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 oh my To be fair, good old Jim Murray. Um 
he's not somebody you would leave. <laughs> it's not somebody you would really necessarily want to invite around your house, you know. Um, just be the look. This is not a good look. He's got a good. He's got a good hat on. Don't you? Don't you get any funny ideas about hats? We're going to talk about whiskey in the news over the, <laughs> over the last um, little while. Whiskey's been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks, uh, a girl called Becky Paskin, who is a whiskey reviewer, um, whiskey, she ran the Scotch Whiskey magazine, I think it was, um, and Jim Murray writes the Whiskey Bible. Uh, this is last year's. And in it, he has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of whiskey reviews. Okay, he sells over a million copies of this every year. Now, I'll give you an example. This is one page. Now, you see all those red marks? Those are all whiskies that he's reviewed. So that's one page. Okay, now in it, so this is the Macallan. And so, for example, the Macallan Gold Sherry Oak Cask. Uh, 89.5 out of 100, tells you knows. No Macallan, I have tasted it since my first in 1975, has been sculpted to show the distillery in such a delicate form. So that's basically most of his reviews. His latest book, uh, Betty Paskin said that there were 34 references in it which were objectifying women and sexist and so on and so forth. Now, if you read some of them, they are a bit sort of near the knuckle. They're a bit. Mm, they're not. They come across. Are you, are you not just being PC there? Well, they come across as a lot that sleazy. Now, the whole whiskey industry. We did a show on women and whiskey, and I, I talked about how influential and how important women have always been in uh, whiskey. Um, from Betsy Williamson uh, over in in uh, Isla Lafroy to all of these other uh, women through history, you know, way back even when whiskey was sold in saloons and, and women were the main people that were selling them and all that kind of stuff, right? So women have always been important, but there's still that sort of chauvinistic nonsense about what would a woman know about whiskey? And we know that there is people that go on about that. But when you see how many whiskey reviews he writes, to pick out 34 of them and say that they're, they're, he, he should be banned from uh, book stockists, shouldn't stock him. He's, people coming on and saying, I don't know who this man is, but I don't want to read any of his stuff. Well, you're not going to read that now anyway, etc., etc. There was calls for some of the major booksellers to stop stocking his books. Well, that's up with the Nazis, that is. Well, it's funny you mentioned Nazis, Justin, because some of these still sell Mein Kampf, you know. So, oh, so yeah. So, you see, if you don't want to read his stuff, don't read it. Just ignore it. Just forget about it. But to her, to his credit, he has apologised. He has said that I'm sorry if I've offended anyone. I don't want to offend anybody. He at one point he says he writes that uh, have I had more fun with a forty one year another forty one year old Canadian? Well, yes. But did I enjoy it as much? Well, no. Um, there's other stuff as well. I mean, Pinderon is made pretty much exclusively by women, and he said that tasting it is like having sex and all that sort of stuff. And it's, nobody really wants to read any of that kind of game, you know. But if you don't like his stuff, just don't buy it. That's it. Just don't buy it. Um, that's fair enough. Now, again, Miss Paskin, Betty Paskin, right? Uh, she has a website called It's Our Whiskey, which is to try and promote the image of whiskey being um, diverse, that, you know, anybody can partake in whiskey and, and the way it should be. Uh, but in the news, a full news story in the New York Post and Financial Times, then you've got the counter argument to it, where you have um People search through all of her whiskey reviews to find any reference to sex or something in that, where then that was thrown up. And it's just so tiresome. Really, really is. If you don't like somebody, just don't buy their books. Don't read their reviews. Don't do any of that. Just 
get over it. Now, uh, Becky Paskin um, has said that she didn't want to start a campaign. That was not her point. Her point was she just didn't like the language. But it just comes out as this sort of weird anti-crusade, de-platform people, don't allow them to speak, etc., etc. It just, I find it all oh, rather bizarre. Um, this this book is a fantastic reference to find out what stuff is about. If you get see a bottle of whiskey, you can have a quick look and just read about it and read as it, what he thinks. You don't have to take any whiskey reviewer. Most of the stuff I talk about isn't, it's just me. On a different day, I might not like something, on a different day I do. But if you don't like your stuff, just don't buy it. And as I say to, to, to Becky Paskin, good, good, show women in the, in the whiskey industry. Because it should be, everybody should be entitled. And any anybody who comes out and says to anybody, what would you know about whiskey? You're only a woman. Just, just that's right enough. Go away. Not interested in speaking to you. Bye bye. You know, it's there to be enjoyed by everybody, no matter who they are. Um, unless, unless you don't drink or whatever. But if you want to enjoy it, fine. All of these whiskies are all uh, associated with uh, women. Bush Mills, Helen Mulholland, one of the, the, the first women to be inducted in the Whiskey Hall of Fame. The Sexton, again, that's made this beautiful bottle. I mean, look at that. that. That's a stunning looking ball. This is the brainchild of a girl called uh, uh, Alex who works up in, in Bushmill. Uh, it's, it's a reference to uh, what her dad used to do. So, you know, women have always been a part of it. So can we just get home with it, you know, instead of deplatforming this guy and accusing this and writing some sort of sleazy whiskey reviews, just move on, you know. But you flashed up another headline there, Justin. That's what you hot and bothered this week, didn't it? I did a wee bit. I did a wee bit, yeah. The the billionaire, the billionaire uh, in a sex cult. Justin was on the the Esther <laughs> American Immigration website. It's quite a <laughs> yes, it was a weird one. I'd heard about that one before. It was a weird one. There's there's some weird there's some weird stuff going on all over the world at the minute, you know. Sometimes you just want to have a wee drink and forget about it all, to be honest. Exactly. That's what you do. Rather than give off about too much about this guy or get all annoyed and offended and counter-offended and re-offended and whatever, sit back, chill out, stick a TV on, stick a phone on, watch Cobra Kai on Netflix. It's hilarious. <laughs> and That's funny. It's so funny. Well, listen, we've got about five minutes left tonight. Uh, we have to tell people about a special exclusive, uh, which is basically happening, uh, well, very, it's very, very soon, you know. 24 hours, Justin. People can get a double header of us this week. <laughs> Headers is pretty much the best way to describe us. Tomorrow night, we are going to have a little chat with our good friend at the English Whiskey Society. Now, lots of people go, England and whiskey. But they, there's 24 distilleries now in England uh, making whiskey. Loads of gin distilleries, which at some point, I imagine, they'll be stripped over and, and start making whiskey as well. And they're having the first ever English Whiskey Festival. Uh, now, it's done online, obviously, because of COVID restrictions. But we're going to be interviewing chatting with uh, a guy tomorrow who run, runs the English Whiskey Society. So Robert Frost is coming on to speak to us tomorrow night. And that will be at 7pm. Okay, so it's a double dose this weekend. It is a double dose this weekend. So uh, that's good. Any idea what you're going to do next week as well? No, 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 not, no, no idea, no. And as you very well know, it takes me to about Thursday before I figure out right what we talk about on Saturday. So, um, no, <laughs> in a word, no. Okay. okay, okay. So that's tomorrow night, seven p.m. Be there or be square. Uh, it is posted up on Facebook and on YouTube. Make sure you like us on the YouTube website. A couple of minutes here. Uh, we're gonna 
run through some of the, the comments. England and whiskey. Yes, it's gone from like a handful to about 30 odd uh, whiskey distilleries. Some of them are doing things that are more than acceptable from what I hear. Uh, I've been at one or two of them. Uh, Frank Heron uh, is saying too many snowflakes out there. They go out of their way to be offended. Cannot come up in tonight's whiskey as the bar Stuart didn't deliver it. I hope you appreciate it. It'll come in the post. It'll come in the post. They usually do. Uh, yeah, a great night. Keep up the good work. I will let you know what I think when they get the postman to drop it off, but a great evening. Uh, uh, Mark Kerr saying what was the sextant in the bottle like uh, that the, they saw? Yeah. Good. Good. Another sherry cask finish. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. Too. You'll do a review on it in the not too distant future. So, uh, yeah, it's good. The bottle's beautiful. It's just a beautiful bottle. Okay. Uh, we're getting big thanks uh, from uh, the uh, Dathai and the, and the WD uh, O'Connell. Uh, thanks very much, Marty, Justin Dathai, for the very ge generous samples. Excellent whiskey. Uh, and, oh, there, there's an offer you can't refuse. Uh, <laughs> any questions? Send them on to me, lads. There you go. Yeah, you can. We'll send them on to you. If you look in the feed, you'll see all the questions, and you can respond to them yourself. That I, it's as simple as that. You can, you can uh, click people's names and respond to them. Uh, uh, and let me see. With the colder nights coming, what do you think of hot whiskey? Shane Foley's asking us about hot whiskeys. Oh, I put it like this. I, I once. I once asked the barman, I, it was a cold winter's night. That, that, sounds, that sounds like something from the Glens of Hunter uh, storytelling festival. <laughs> it was a cold, cold winter's night in Athlone, and I went for a little walk across the bridge. And when I came back, I, I went into the bar, and I said, can I have a, a black bush, and can I get a drop of hot water? So I just wanted a drop of warm water, just to put it in. You know, just out the kettle, I could let it cool down, put it in. And the... the, the <laughs> <laughs> the girl behind the bar said to me, hot water? And I said, yes. Do you want ice with that? She said, uh, no, because that would kind of defeat the purpose of having a warm water. So occasionally, on a cold night, a touch of warm water in a whiskey. And just a touch is, is, is perfectly acceptable, but don't put ice in it. All right. Catch you tomorrow night at 7. Another great show. Thank you very much.